This is one of multiple videos discussing Python programming. Now there's a lot of information on the internet with regards to Python programming, but in this series of videos, I'm gonna concentrate solely on the use of Python with networking devices and specifically with GNS3. I'm a very strong believer in practical learning. Think about it. When you were a child, did you go to university or school to learn how to ride a bike? Typically, you learned how to ride a bike by riding a bike and falling off a few times, making mistakes. But as you practiced, you got better and better at riding a bike. I think the same is true for any other skill that you want to gain and any other knowledge that you want to obtain. The best way to do it is to just do it, make mistakes, pick yourself up, and try again. And with that in mind, I'm gonna show you how quickly you can get programming a Cisco network using Python. In Google, I've done a search for Python Telnet, and my first hit is the Telnet library, or Telnet client available in Python 2.7. Now there's a large debate in the Python community about which version of Python you should learn. Python 2.7 is being replaced by Python 3, but notice on the Python website you can still download Python 2.7, and a lot of operating systems and network devices have version 2.7 by default. I'm gonna show you both Python 2.7 and Python 3 as part of these videos, or as part of my GNS3 Python course. You may only have Python 2.7 available, so it's good to know that, but you should also learn Python 3 for the future. So notice the simple script that we can copy from the Python documentation. We'll start off with a script and start programming our GNS3 topology. In GNS3, I'm going to drag a iOS V router to the workspace, as well as an iOS V switch. These devices take a while to boot up. So to allow my Docker containers to connect to the internet quickly, I'm gonna use a layer two switch. One of the Docker containers available is an Ubuntu container. And that's what I'm gonna use in this topology. Rather than trying to get Python running on your Windows PC or trying to get Python working on other operating systems, it's gonna be a lot quicker for us just to use a Docker container and add that to our GNS3 topology. Again, my belief is start learning as quickly as you can, make mistakes and learn from that. Don't get hung up with trying to learn the best way to do everything right away. Just get started. Some people believe that they need to have a degree to become a programmer or use programming skills in networking. I don't necessarily agree with that. Just get started. So on the Ubuntu machine, I'm gonna edit the config. I'm gonna set this device to use DHCP and click save and click start to boot up the network. I'm gonna open up a console to each device. Now again, the Cisco devices will take a while to boot up, but our Docker container has already booted up and we can already ping google.com even though the switch and the router are still booting. So, apt get update. We'll update our references in Ubuntu that's done, we'll install Python. In this first example, I'm gonna install Python 2.7. So Python, version of Python that we're using is 2.7.12. So here is the script that we're gonna start off with. It's not perfect. What we're doing now is not necessarily the most optimized way of implementing a script like this. But the idea is we wanna get started. 
get it working by, for instance, creating a loopback on the router and configuring VLANs on the switch. And then we can build on our script and optimize it. I'm gonna use nano to create a file. So let's call this Python router one script one to start off with. And then I'm gonna paste the code off the internet into nano. So we're importing modules here, get pass sys telnet library. The device that we're going to telnet to is gonna be the router. So we need to configure the router's IP address, username and password, and other details for when the script telnets to the router. So before we continue with our script, let's configure the network devices. So here's the router, it's booted up now. I'll bypass the initial configuration dialog. I'll configure the router with a hostname of router one, configure and enable password of Cisco. And in this example, I'm gonna configure a username of David with a password of Cisco. On the VTY lines, we're going to use login local. We're gonna log in with the username and password. And I'm going to enable both Telnet and SSH. On the Gigabit 00 interface, we'll configure this interface for DHCP and no shut the interface on the router. In the real world, you're typically gonna configure router IP addresses statically. But in this example, I'll use DHCP just to get started. The router has now been assigned an IP address of 192.168.122.71. Let's test the connection to the router manually. So I'll telnet manually to the router from itself and log in to verify and then close down the telnet session. Now in this first example, we're using the telnet library and it's gonna be looking for certain strings. And based on those strings, it's gonna send output to the router. So it's important that you test manually first before you try and do this with a script. So the host that we're gonna tell it to is 192.168.122.71. In other words, the IP address that was allocated here through DHCP. So Python makes programming a lot easier because you can leverage the work that others have done. So we are importing various modules. Rather than trying to write our own low-level Telnet library, we're just gonna leverage another Python Telnet library and other options such as get pass. So we don't have to worry about setting up complicated password information here. Basically, the user will be asked for a password so let's change that to something like enter your Telnet username. That's gonna be stored in a variable, which is called a letter in the script. We're gonna be prompted for a password. That's gonna be stored in a variable called password, and that's gonna be passed to the router later in the script. So we're gonna Telnet to the host which is this variable, which we've manually configured. Now, again, using the concept of get started and iterate or improve, once you've done a bit of coding, we are hard coding a lot of values in the script. Programmers with lots of knowledge will tell you, you can do this better, you can do that better, and so forth and so on. We're not gonna worry about that. In the same way that a CCIE knows BGP better than a CCNA does, a programmer with 10 years or 20 years of programming knowledge is gonna know programming better than you if you've just started. But we're not gonna worry about that. We simply gonna get started and then we'll improve as we go along. So what it's looking for here is a login prompt. Now this is where you need to be careful. When we tell that to the router, it's not going to display login. It's gonna display username. So what we want to do is change that to username. We're looking for the prompt username, and then we're going to pass the variable user to the router and do a carriage return. Then if a password 
is configured, we're going to look for the password prompt. So let's confirm that that's correct. Yes, it is. We will be asked for our password. So the script's gonna look for that and then it's gonna pass the password that we entered to the router and press carriage return. Now this is incorrect. LS is a, a Linux command. We don't wanna use that. What I'm gonna do now is press Control K, which is cut, Control U allows me to paste. So I'll paste a few lines here. So what we wanna do is send the command enable to the router. And then we wanna send an enable password of Cisco. And then we wanna do a conf T. And then we wanna type interface loopback zero. Control K to copy that, paste it back. Then we wanna do IP address 1.1.1 with a mask of that. Control K copies, Control U pastes back. I'll paste it down here as well. Then we're gonna type end to go back to privilege mode, Control U to paste back. And then we're gonna type exit to exit out of the router. Now we're not doing any validation here. Programmers with lots of experience will tell you you need to validate stuff. We'll get to that later. We just wanna do some basic programming now. Control X will allow us to escape nano. Yes, to save the script. Our script is saved as Python R1 script one. Now, on the router, exit out of the telnet session, show IP interface brief. There is no loopback configured on the router at the moment. What I'm gonna do is do a debug telnet so we can see whether telnet works. In other words, we wanna see the script telnetting to the router. And what I'm gonna do now is type Python, Python R1 script one. We prompted for our username, which in my case is David, password is Cisco. And notice something happened. We see output on the router. We can see that it was configured from console by David on VTY. Notice suddenly we see a loopback interface coming up. In the output of our Telnet script, we see the output of what took place on the router. But notice on the router, show IP interface brief, we now see a loopback configured. Now just to prove this, show version shows us that we're working on the router. Show IP interface brief shows us that the loopback was configured. So show run interface loopback zero. There's the loopback on the router. This output was displayed because in the script, and in this case, I'll cut it, we've got this command right at the end saying print telnet read all. So it was as simple as that to get a Python script to do something on a router in Genius 3. Let's do one more. Let's say we wanna configure a, another loopback address. So I'll copy that, Control K, Control U, Control U. Now again, those guys who've been programming for a long time will tell you that you need to configure a loop here. And that's a better way to do it. But to get started, we'll do this manually and save our script. Run the script again. Before I run the script again, show IP interface brief. We only have loopback zero configured. Username is David, password is Cisco. We can see that the router was configured. Loopback one has come up. Show IP interface brief. There is loopback one configured with IP address of 2.2.2.2. Now again, we could do other things as simple as this. Let's configure OSPF and then we'll look at configuring the switch. So I'll paste some lines in here. Type router OSPF1, network 0.0.0.0, with a mask in area zero. And I'll get rid of this line. Control X to escape, Y to save, just so that you can see the script 
This is our script at the moment. I've added these lines. So let's run the script. Python R1 script one, before I run that, show IP protocols. Notice no OSPF is enabled on the router. Username is David, password is Cisco. That's what we did on the router. We can see it was configured here. Show IP protocols. Notice OSPF is now running on the router because we configured OSPF through our Python script. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how to optimize the script and how to improve on it. But it was as simple as that to use Python to programmatically change configurations on network devices. I've put the Python script below this video if you want to use the script that I created. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.